Now that the racist chanting of the rocket scientists at a fraternity in Oklahoma. Then uh, came the suspending. The national headquarters of Sigma Alpha Epsilon closed its University of Oklahoma chapter after that, after that video surfaced and then went viral. Now the president of the university says that he's sickened by this and is now calling for an investigation of the incident. Well, just about everybody hopefully says this isn't um, not only uh, obviously the right action, but the question then became, should the entire fraternity be punished for the actions of a few members? And that also leads to a broader question for the panel. Where does free speech become illegal hate speech? And Mr. Bartlett, I, I come to you. You, you deal with a, a lot of cases um, that obviously not only involve civil rights, but that line here when you were dealing with bias um, in your days as a prosecutor. Ugly, hateful speech. Where does it cross the line from being something of hate speech rather than just idiots on a, fr on a bus here with too much liquor in their system? Well, the, the speech that was being used could possibly incite violence. Uh, those are some of the things that you're going to look toward. And yes, you have a First Amendment right to, to say certain things, um, but you don't have a First Amendment right to maintain your frat house on a university. So that's a separate issue. Uh, when you really look at what they were doing here, uh, these kids were using language which was, which was divisive, which was going to cause problems on campus. It wasn't someone simply stating their belief, but it was language which, if everyone else heard it, uh, would clearly possibly lead to, to riots, possibly lead to violence. Uh, and those are some of the things that you would look toward in terms of whether it's there. Yep. Um, there was obviously chanting on that bus, um, and it wasn't just the guys. In fact, apparently there was a, a couple of sorority members also that were caught on camera. But let's say the argument is, um, one of our kids was sitting in the front of the bus or the back of the bus that weren't on camera and were offended um, by what was said and certainly weren't participatory. Should they face the same punishment as those bigots who were doing the chant? Absolutely not. They did nothing wrong. I mean, just because you end up being around a bunch of morons doesn't mean you should be punished for it. I mean, if they're friends with them, they should, their parents should have a long conversation with them about who they're hanging out with. But listen, if you didn't do it, you didn't do it. But then that begs the question as to the university president, David Bourne, who we see right there, said, and i got to tell you, if I was the university president and I'd do the same thing, shut the whole thing down. I'd be harmed if I was a member of that organization, even if those words never came out of my mouth, um, because by association I'm going to be uh, suffering the same punishments, if you will. Some will be expelled, some won't, but I'm going to be branded by that. Is that my own tough luck or did the university go too far? No, I think it's your own tough luck, quite frankly. I mean, listen, we associate with people constantly, and hopefully we're very careful about the people we associate with, and when we're not, we can pay for it. Jimmy, I want to read you what the ACLU had to say in, in Oklahoma, and obviously an interesting case because the ACLU certainly always taking the position um, of the aggrieved, but in this particular case, defending even the ugliest of speech, they said any sanction imposed on students for their speech must therefore be consistent with the First Amendment and not merely a punishment for vile and reprehensible speech. Courts have consistently and rightfully ruled as such. Um, ugly and... Um, uh, ugly but yet free to say. I is it a difficult line to navigate here or no? It's a very difficult line to navigate. There's <clears throat> that line that you cross between protected speech and illegal or actionable hate speech and I agree with Mayo that when you are threatening not to admit people of a certain race into your fraternity and you're talking about hanging them from a tree, it is insightful, it does you know, state a present intention, at least in some regard. And I think that you lose your right to go to that school, and you certainly lose your right to be in that fraternity. And, you know, you join a fraternity, you understand that the entire fraternity is bound by certain rules, and you will benefit from the good they do because you'll be associated with it, and you may fall victim to the bad other members of it do. They have every right to shut that fraternity down. It violated the rules and codes of that school. And as we've seen here, this is not just relegated to uh, Norman, Oklahoma. Uh, we've seen this on other college campuses in both fraternities, sororities, even athletic teams. An entire frat at Penn State has reportedly been suspended for allegedly having a Facebook page showing partially naked women 
and hazing as well. And if you go to the University of Maryland, uh, Baltimore County campus, they've suspended five female lacrosse players accused of sending threatening and violent texts to teammates. Now some are calling for the coaches to even be punished and the entire program to be investigated. Now, let me stick on the fraternity aspect of this. May I can make a compelling argument, if I'm the university president right now, um, and frats and sororities do a lot of good, they raise a lot of money, do a lot of charitable work here, but if I'm looking at liability standpoint, what are the odds that a frat's going to be, by definition, they've got to have pledges, where they're going to rush the fraternity or whatever else. They're going to make tough, life tough on them. Idiots. 18, 19, 20-year-olds don't always know where to do that line. It crosses into hazing, sometimes violent, even sometimes even fatalities, drug poisoning, drug alcohol poisoning. We've seen sexual abuse happen, and now, obviously, with the cameras and all their caught for posterity here, et cetera, and, and we've seen incidents like happen on the bus. Just like we talked about with concussions in football, do you think there's debates going on on college campuses at university presidents that say, do I really need this in my life? I'm fostering an environment with the Greek culture here um, that's going to make my premiums go through the roof. Absolutely. I think that they've got to be uh, def seriously considering preventative measures. I think that they have to start looking at uh, code of conduct and making it clear to all of the sororities and fraternities that if they engage in certain conduct that they forfeit their privilege to be on campus. Uh, those are things that they're going to do. I have a preemptively just saying no more. No well, more Greek I, life. I think that you could do that, except when you do that, then it's such a broad brush that you're painting with, with sororities or fraternities that have not had any issues, or perhaps even, um, let's say, a sister or brother fraternity on a different campus, perhaps, which hasn't had any issues. Maybe it's been exemplary. I don't know that you would do that, but you do want to take the preemptive measure to make sure that you've taken steps to let them know clearly that this is the position of the university. It's going to be zero tolerance, very similar to what the NFL ultimately started mm -hmm. to approach after the Adrian Peterson and the Ray Rice cases. If a kid is hazed, if a kid is a victim of sexual assault, if a kid at Oklahoma um, wants to, because of what was said on tape, wants to bring a lawsuit, they're not going to relegate it to the frat. They're going to go after the college now. That's right. And they're going to say, you created and fostered an environment where I could have been a victim of all the different things that I mentioned. In many ways, aren't they asking for trouble? They absolutely are asking for trouble. And you know, not only do they ask for trouble that way, we, we now know from our other segments that what they do is they protect these cases. They, they, there's so many complaints throughout the country that these young women are assaulted sexually and they go and try to get help from the school and they, they get no help. But look, the, the bigger question is, how is it that kids on a bus are doing that? Where do they come from? Where do they learn that? Why is that okay? Why, why is it okay they, to post? They'd be so comfortable to do that. To me, the thing was, not that you had an idiot to, but they all knew the song. And to me, if anybody thinks That's it's right. one idiot that was just yelling out there, they all knew the song. And Doug, in this case, in Maryland, in Penn State, everybody has got a phone with them. At all times, sometimes it seems that they're symbiotically connected to it. I got to think that this has changed the way that cases are now tried here because all it takes is one person, one disgruntled person, one person that has a bit of moral clarity, one person who says, I won't go there, to just forward, to hit, to hit send and send it to somebody in law enforcement, to a college or whatever else, and then this thing blows up and finally gets the exposure it needs. It's changed everything, hasn't it, the, the, the cell phone? Yes, it has changed everything, but you know, I don't know, I'm never shocked by how stupid people are. I just never am. I mean, it's over and over again, but you know, you really have to look at this. There, there is a positive side to this. If you were to ever tell people that you were on a bus and kids were doing this, they'd say you're crazy. And now, and if Not you, if my you, kid, right? If you talk they about don't the, say those people, the First right? Amendment, the First Amendment, the, the, one of the sides of the First Amendment is you let people be an idiot. And you let people expose themselves as idiots. And that way, when you have a discussion about this and somebody says these things don't happen in real life, yep. they do. When we come back, everyone, an interesting question also relating to the First Amendment. Actress Ashley Judd, she got threatened by trolls on Twitter. Maybe you'll say, hey, what's new with that, Rich? Well, here's the twist. She is suing the tweeters. But could she also sue Twitter? I got the question that I'm going to ask our panel. Has Twitter created a platform that they themselves could be legally culpable for us. Stay with us.